Six months ago, I joined the YouTube Partners Program, which provides ways for creators to earn money from their YouTube videos. While you may have heard stories of big creators making hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars on YouTube, what you don't often hear are the stories of smaller creators who are just at the beginning of their YouTube journey. In this video, I'm gonna break down how much money I made as a small creator in my first six months of monetization. My goal with this video is to help give those considering a similar journey a realistic view of what monetization on YouTube looks like in the early days. If you're new here, my name is Shah. I make content about data science and entrepreneurship. And if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. That's a great no-cost way you can support me in all the videos that I make. To give a little background, I started making YouTube videos about three years ago while I was getting my physics PhD. As someone who had survived grad school with the help of YouTube, I wanted to give back by sharing content that would have been helpful to a past version of myself. I did this for about two and a half years before finally satisfying all the different criteria for monetization. For those who aren't familiar, there are three main criteria for getting monetized on YouTube. The first is to upload three videos. The second is to get 1,000 subscribers. And the third is to get 4,000 watch time hours. As far as timing goes, it took me about three months to hit that first criterion, two years to hit that second criterion, of 1,000 subscribers, and then finally two and a half years to hit that final criterion of 4,000 watch time hours. YouTube's Partners Program provides creators five different ways of monetizing their content. The three that I have set up are supers, watch page ads, and shorts feed ads. Supers are a native way that viewers can leave tips for creators, while watch page ads and shorts feed ads are exactly what they sound like. Advertisers pay YouTube to run their ads on the platform of which creators get a portion. The two monetization options I don't currently use are memberships and shopping. While these are things I may set up in the future, at this point I don't really have any good ideas of how to provide value through these means. All right, with all the context out of the way, let's get down to it. How much money did I make on YouTube? After two and a half years of waiting, in my first month monetized on YouTube, I made a grand total of, drum roll, $20.82. While this might sound like a very small number, it is actually more than I expected. I've actually heard stories of creators getting about 20 cents in their first month of monetization. So one thing that makes a big difference in how much creators earn are CPM and RPM, which are short for cost per milli and revenue per milli. Milli just means thousand. So cost per milli is how much YouTube charges advertisers to run their ad 1,000 times on a particular video, while revenue per milli or RPM is how much YouTube pays the creator for those 1,000 views. So different topics draw different audiences which correspond to different CPMs and RPMs. My content touches on education, technology, and business, which may have higher CPM and RPM than some other genres. So while my first month of monetization wasn't so hot, lucky for me, this number went up over time. In my second month of monetization, I made $28.05. In my third month, I made $36.69. So what we're seeing here is linear growth with about an $8 increase in revenue per month. However, this growth trajectory started to change in October. In my fourth month of monetization, my revenue doubled and hit $73.86. In the next month, it almost quadrupled and hit $287.38. And so far in December, I've hit $201.56. So today's December 15th. If we wanted to guesstimate what this month's revenue might be, it'll probably be around $400. These numbers highlight a key property of content creation. Namely, growth isn't linear, it's exponential. The catch, however, is exponential growth is painfully slow in the early days. A great example of this is that it took me two years to hit 1,000 subscribers
subscribers. But then it took me six months to hit the next 1,000 subscribers. And then after that, it only took me three months to hit the next 1,000 subscribers. And now in the past three months, my subscriber count has more than doubled. So a natural question is, what the heck is driving this growth? And we get a pretty clear answer when looking at the analytics. So let's see what that looks like. So here we have the channel analytics and I'm a data scientist. So I like to think about analytics. I like to think about explanations and models for why do things happen the way that they do. YouTube analytics is super interesting because it's a great example of exponential growth and what we might call a fat tailed distribution. And if you're not familiar with fat tails, I actually got a video series all about it. So go check that out. But anyway, I think the growth that I'm seeing on my channel has a pretty simple explanation. And so if we see the top five videos for the past month, a pattern starts to emerge where three out of five of these are all about large language models. But in particular, there's this video, fine tuning large language models that has kind of gone viral and gotten a lot of traction. So I think there are two things kind of driving this growth. So like one, people love large language models. It's a really hot topic right now. Everyone's talking about generative AI, etc. The second thing I think is driving this is the fact that these three videos are all part of the same six part video series. And I think making content in series format helps drive this exponential growth. And there's a really simple explanation for that, which is network effects. Basically, if someone watches one video in this series, it increases the probability that they'll watch another video in this series. And if they watch another video in this series, it increases the probability they'll watch yet another video in this series. So you get this positive feedback loop this positive reinforcement. And this is really amplified by my strategy, which was I made a six part video series and I also made a six part blog series on Medium, which was published in Towards Data Science. And Towards Data Science has their own distribution and then you have network effects working over there. So I think all these different factors came together to kind of drive this viral phenomenon and this exponential growth. However, there are two other videos here that are also performing really well, which is how to make a data science portfolio completely for free with GitHub pages and how to create a custom email signature with Gmail. And I think the thing with these two is that these are just like evergreen content and these solve two very particular pain points that I have experienced in the past. So it's not super surprising that other people also have these pain points and are looking for this content. I personally found a hard time finding good tutorials on these two topics. So I decided to just make them because because they would have been very helpful to me when I was first trying to solve these problems. So adding up all my earnings from these first six months of monetization, my grand total revenue from YouTube in 2023 is $648.34. While there's no way I can pay my bills with this kind of income, it still blows my mind that I can post a video on YouTube and money just appears in my bank account. Three other ways I've monetized content creation this past year are earnings from Medium, which is a blogging platform, sponsorships, actually just one sponsorship, and consulting which I'll explain more. Starting with the first one, Medium is a membership-based platform. So the way monetization works there is that writers have the option to make their stories for members only, from which they gain earnings from readership and engagement. Medium's partners program works a bit differently where I was able to start earning money pretty quickly when I started posting on the platform, which means I've been earning on Medium for the entirety of 2023. And so when I add this all up, this comes to a grand total of 5000 $1,182.82. The next way I made money outside of YouTube earnings was through a sponsorship deal. This consisted of including an affiliate link in the description of my video on how to make a custom Gmail signature. This generated $200 in earnings plus a 15% referral fee for anyone that signs up for the sponsor's service. To date, we don't have any signups, so so far the earnings have just been $200. Then finally, I put consulting on the list. Since I don't make enough money to support myself from content creation, my main source of revenue for the near future is my independent consulting business, where I help businesses build AI and analytics products. Currently, all my leads for this business come via my content, whether it's YouTube videos or blogs I post on Medium. Sometimes people even directly book paid calls with me through my Calendly link. This happened five times this past year, generating $365 in revenue. And so adding together all three 
three of these non-YouTube revenue sources. This comes to a total of $5,747.82, which again, is nothing you can pay your bills with, but this is mind boggling. When I first started making content, I never thought that I would be able to generate this kind of revenue. However, content creation has unlocked so many new opportunities even beyond this direct monetization. Like I mentioned earlier, it's my main lead source for my consulting business. But what I would say is more valuable than that is all the amazing connections I've been able to make with like-minded people who are on a similar journey as me. While I didn't have time to cover all aspects of my earnings and analytics, if you have any specific questions, please feel free to drop those in the comments section below. I'm more than happy to share details that might be helpful and relevant to you. And I hope this has been helpful for anyone curious about content creation. While it might be easy to glamorize the life of a content creator, the reality of being a small creator, which is actually most creators, may not be what you expect. And if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and sharing with others. That's a great no-cost way you can support me and all the videos that I make. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.